Welcome back. In the previous videos, you learned how to excite a laser beam and you wrote code to monitor a homemade light sensor using a virtual Arduino Uno microcontroller. Now it's time to do the same in the laboratory. Before arriving at the lab, prepare your computer. First, create a dedicated folder on your laptop to store your code files. Next, if you have not done so yet, download and install the Arduino IDE. If you plan to take robotics in the future, I recommend that you install Teensy Duino instead. Both are free and easy to install. The links to the download pages are in the description below. Open Arduino or Teensy Duino. Your code window will look like mine here. Open the Preferences window. On a PC, click on File, then Preferences from the menu bar as shown. On a Mac, this is found by clicking on the word Arduino or Teensy Duino, and then Preferences. Here, you may set the default sketchbook location and the font size if you wish. Also, check the box to display line numbers. Press OK when done. Next, let's make sure the software knows which microcontroller we are using. It should default to the Arduino Uno, but just to make sure, click on Tools, and then Board from the menu bar. Then select Arduino AVR Boards and Arduino Uno if it is not already selected as shown. Now you are ready to copy your code on Tinkercad and paste it into the Arduino IDE. To ensure that you grab all the code from Tinkercad, click Control A, Command A on a Mac, which highlights everything in the code window. Then just copy like normal. On the Arduino side, click Control A once again to highlight everything and then paste the code like so. It is likely your code will not be very neat, so the next thing I recommend doing is pressing Control T or Command T on a Mac to tidy your code. This will align all the curly brackets and indent everything properly. Next, save the sketch in your code folder. I am naming mine PF. Pendulum Speed. Arduino will automatically create a folder with the same name and put your code file inside that folder. Before you get to the lab, test if your code was properly copied over. Do so by clicking on the Verify button, which is the round check button located at the top of the IDE. When you click on the button, you'll see a progress bar appear near the bottom right corner of the window and the words compiling sketch near the bottom left corner. If there are no errors, you will see the done compiling message in the bottom left and you are all set for the lab work. If you did receive errors and an angry red bar at the bottom of the IDE window appears, it means you didn't properly copy your code from Tinkercad. If your code runs on Tinkercad, it will run on the Arduino software. So make sure you copied everything from Tinkercad and pasted it over everything in Arduino. You can't forget even one itty bitty curly brace. The next steps are for when you are in the lab. I encourage you to take notes while watching the remainder of this video so you are well prepared for when you are in person in the classroom. In the lab, look at the laser and light sensor boards and locate the header pins labeled S, positive, and negative for signal, power, and ground respectively. Locate the corresponding signal, power, ground pins on the Arduino shield. Refer to your notes from the first video in this series for assistance. Then, use a three-conductor cable, like this one, to connect the laser board to pin 13 on the microcontroller. Make sure the black wire connects both negative ground pins together, and the white wire connects both signal pins. Do the same with the light sensor using a longer cable whose signal wire is yellow. Use the cable to connect the light sensor to pin A0 on the UNO. 
Make sure metal never contacts the pins on the bottom of the sensor board. Here is the proper connection using the multicolored shield. And here is the proper connection using the other shield. To ignite the laser, you'll need to plug the microcontroller into your computer using a programming cable. Mac users are likely to need a USB adapter. Before plugging in, remove all metal bits from around the microcontroller. Even a tiny staple can short the metal pins on the back of the board, so be careful where you set it down. Your laser has been configured to turn on once the microcontroller is powered up. Go ahead and plug the UNO into your computer. Warning, if the laser does not turn on, immediately unplug the programming cable and check your connections. If you ever need to turn off the laser, you can do it by unplugging the programming cable from the laptop. Your computer should now recognize the UNO as new hardware. We can verify this by clicking on Tools and then Port from the menu bar. Here's where it can get tricky. On a PC, you should see something like this, COM4 Arduino UNO. Select that port. On a Mac, it will say something like dev slash cu dot usb modem and then a long number and then hopefully the words arduino uno in parentheses select that port if you ever use a different board or plug into a different usb port you will need to repeat the previous steps If you do not see the Arduino Uno port option, check that your cables and adapters are securely plugged in. If that doesn't help, close Arduino and try again. If that fails, restart your computer. If that fails, switch to your lab partner's computer. Once everything is set up and working, it's time to send the code to the Arduino microcontroller. This is exciting. With the Arduino plugged into your laptop, Press the Upload button once, only once. Note, the progress bar appears in the bottom right and the words Compiling Sketch and then Uploading in the bottom left. This part is critical. While these uploading indicators are displayed, do not unplug the microcontroller or you will destroy it. Also, it is very important that you do not re-upload the code while these messages are present. Doing this may also destroy the microcontroller. When the progress bar has disappeared and you see the words done uploading in the bottom left, we know the code now resides on the microcontroller. Yay! At this point, we could safely unplug the controller or upload new code without worrying about damaging the device. If you are unable to upload your code, Check again that the correct board and port have been selected under the Tools menu and that all your cables are securely plugged in. Hopefully your code compiled and is now running on the UNO. To see the output, open the serial monitor by clicking on the magnifying glass icon in the top right corner of the IDE. You should see raw data from the light sensor scroll up the screen. Adjust the lighting conditions and make note of the output values. Shine a flashlight onto the photoresistor. Cover it with your hand. Turn off the lights in the room. Hit it with the laser beam. What are the readings? Consider recording them in your notebook for future reference. After you've sufficiently experimented with the sensor, close the serial monitor. Then select Tools and Serial Plotter from the menu bar. Experiment with the sensor readings once again, this time viewing the output 
as a real-time graph. Pretty nifty, huh? Notice the y-axis automatically scales. If you want a faster response time, return to the code window, scroll down to the print sensor function, and reduce the delay time. Upload this new code and watch the magic happen. Before leaving this example, I want to show you how easy it is to use the same code to read data from other sensors. For example, we can replace the photoresistor with a thermistor and measure changes in temperature. Or we can use a completely new sensor, such as this Sharp IR rangefinder, which can measure the distance to an object. Once the code is written, you can do a lot with physical computing. This is a good place to stop. In the next video, you will learn how to use while loops, analog read commands, and Arduino's built-in clock to determine the amount of time the laser beam is blocked, for example, by a swinging pendulum.